Let's talk about this breaking news story concerning child killer Colin Pitchforks. So he's going to avoid being put on the sex offenders register because of a legal loophole, apparently. Mr Pitchfork, who is 61, raped and murdered 15-year-olds Linda Mann and Dawn Ashworth in 1983 and 1986. He is set to be freed from HMP Layhill in Gloucestershire after serving 33 years in prison. You might remember that Robert Buckland, the Justice Secretary, tried to intervene on this case and suggest that he shouldn't be released as early and I think that legal bid failed and therefore he's being released but to add insult to injury the idea that he's not going to be placed on the sex offenders register because of a legal loophole well let's find out what that loophole is Joseph Cotry Monson is a director of Mary Monson Solicitors that's on London's Fleet Street and he's a specialist in defending those accused of very serious crimes um, Joseph if I can call you that but what's the situation here what's this legal loophole well, Camilla, of course, you can call me Joseph, and thank you very much for having me on the show. So uh, there's a presumption. First of all, I think we say this uh, from the point of view that with regard to Pitchfork, his crimes and how families must feel when he's released, I think we all find that abhorrent, and that's mm -hmm. a given. But as far as the technical analysis of this, which is what you've asked me to talk about today, is concerned, this is pretty much how it goes. So the sentencing for Mr. Pitchfork happened between before 1997, and that's that means that's before the sex offenders registers rules came into force, before that law existed. And there's a general presumption in in UK law and in law really the world over in most democracies that you shouldn't be punished for laws that weren't uh, on the basis of laws that weren't in place. If if uh, you commit a crime and uh, then then if that offense if that wasn't an offense at the time that it was committed mm. or if you're if you fall foul of a law in any way for example sex offenders register if that law didn't exist at the time the presumption is it won't be retrospective and of course if you look at that in isolation most people would agree that it's probably fair that you're punished or you're punished according to what the regime was at the time now that might sound like a loophole, etc. And of course, initially, right-thinking people might have some, some concern about it. And the Telegraph is making it out to be, oh, this is some big scandal. But mm. I think, first of all, we need to ask ourselves, what is the sex offenders register? And what are the alternative conditions that will be placed under? And is the sex, sex offenders register actually significant in that context? And we will find interestingly very quickly that the answer is no. And the reason is this. The sex offenders register is not some list that all communities get access to, which enables people to stay away from you. It's a requirement that means that you have to tell the police where you live, if you move house and if you travel on holiday, that is essentially it. Mm. Those are things that in the course of Mr. Pitchfork's release under his very onerous life license conditions will already be in place and then some. This is a man who will be for the rest of his life, irrespective, you know, and I'm not saying that that, that, that means that he's going through some great suffering or punishment continually, but in terms of monitoring, under his existing conditions, he will be under much greater scrutiny than the very actually weak and not that significant requirements under the sex offenders register. We don't have laws that mean that all of your neighbours can find out immediately or mm. all schools locally will know what you've been doing. These are misconceptions about the sex offenders register. The conditions and the resources that will be put in by police to monitor him are already, in fact, much greater. So, you know, fair play to the Telegraph for raising this, spotting that this is a loophole. Technically, I, I guess you could call it one. Is it significant from a legal point of view? And more importantly, from the point of view of us at home thinking, well, oh, hang on a minute, this is a big deal. You know, I, I'm afraid probably, well, I, I suppose I should be reassuring people probably in fact not. Okay, so from a legal perspective I understand that and I appreciate that he's going to be closely watched by the authorities and mm. I equally appreciate that we can't have a situation where people have served their time, they're released back into the community and they fall victim to kind of vigilante attacks. However, what typically happens with somebody who has committed such serious crimes? Will Pitchfork be able to change his name by deed poll? Um, could he just slip back into a community and people won't know that they're living next well, to a child killer? I suppose that's going to be people's main concern. Well, I, I think I think that's right, and I and I, I uh, there, there there is a provision uh, for people if they have a particularly good reason to know uh, about. Uh, uh, neighbours who may be uh, 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 may, be, may be convicted 
uh, criminals, especially if there's an element of danger or whatever. Uh, it would have to be circumstances that were proportionate, and it's not a, it's not an automatic right. Can he change his name? Yes. What good will it do him? Uh, probably not much is the answer because you know that monitoring that he will be receiving or on the receiving end of perhaps for the rest of his life it is onerous enough mark my words the, the police Camilla will be doing everything to neutralize any danger and even though and we must acknowledge the horror of his crimes many many years ago if he represented any objective significant risk irrespective of what we feel about those and often it, when people get let, let out it's because they're near the end of their life because their health condition is such that they're immobile anyway and we don't have those types of details about him but those are usually the types of situations when murderers are released when it's such serious offenses well mm, okay that, no, that thank you, Joseph. I, yeah, no, fair enough. I mean, fair play to the Telegraph. I must support my colleagues in breaking this story. But at the same time, it seems like he's falling into the same legal loophole of many people who have been convicted and indeed served time for very serious crimes. Thank you. Joseph Cotry Monson is a um, barrister and he works in Fleet Street and he specialises in defending those accused of serious crimes. Um, interesting case, that pitchfork. All I would say is I don't think you'd want him moving in next door to you if you've got children and that's the issue here.